I don't ever want to come off like we're we're fear mongering people from lifting sure, or exercising. Sure. Like, oh my god, I listen to mind pump. I'm so afraid to exercise or do anything. No, you're right. I don't want to hurt myself. Right. I don't ever want to come off that way. But what you just said is to me that's the minimum the minimal thing that will happen if you don't address this. You'll cap so if your you, potential. If you just say, um, okay, I'm going to go exercise. F what the guys say. Um, and, and, and some exercise is better than no exercise. And that's you decide that's your attitude. Okay, well maybe you go and you don't get hurt, and maybe you lose a few pounds, but you will cap. Your 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 potential of what you could have reached had you laid the the solid foundation. Think about it this way: yeah. um, you you already know how to use a shovel, okay? But there's a month training course to learn how to use a backhoe, and you're like, no, I just want to start digging right now. Initially, you're going to dig faster with the shovel, but you're only going to get so fast. You're only going to be able to dig so much because a backhoe is so much more efficient. And so that's kind of what we're communicating: there's efficiencies, there's you know injury risk, there's potential. And proper technique and form has been established as the best ways to get your maximum potential. And you're right, Adam, at the very least, maybe you don't hurt yourself, which I think you will over time, but maybe you don't. Well, you're just never going to get to your full, your full potential. Here's a good rule of thumb when it comes to strength training. What you train, you strengthen. Okay, so why is this important? Well, if you have bad form when you work out, guess what form you're going to strengthen and make stronger? The bad form. I see the angle you're going with. Yes. Definitely. I was yeah. like, Definitely. Welcome to the show. My name's Sal DeSefno, Captain Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of how I felt when I saw it written up there. I'm like, Lift that's weights, so profound. <laughs> well, okay, so let's back up for a second. What? Why is bad form, like quote unquote bad form, why is it considered bad, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at the human body, it, there are ways that it can move that will minimize or negate risk of injury, or wear and tear issues, you know, joint pain, that kind of stuff. And then you can move and veer away from that and gain more and more risk for things like tendonitis and pain and joint issues and that kind of stuff. And if your form is off perfect or off good, if it's closer to bad, and you're not paying attention to it and you're just getting stronger, and at the moment you don't feel any pain. So you add 10 pounds to that lift, another 10 pounds to that lift. And before you know it, you're doing crazy PRs with not great form, Risk of injury goes through the roof. And then to try to go back to train good form, it's almost like it's got to unlearn. Your body has to unlearn all that crap that you've taught it over well, those years of training. The worst at this. Well, mainly because it's like they've perfected a lot of the ways to compensate around a lot of these movements and, and get really good and effective at uh, their body's recruitment uh, in, in a not so optimal way. Uh, but to, to be able to kind of reverse out of that, it's like almost having to relearn an entire new language. So would you say this flies in the face of the idea of any form of exercise is better than no exercise? Yeah, that's, a, that's such a, that's too much of a sweeping statement, right? Like mm -hmm. I get where it comes from because general activity is better than not being active, but we all know like someone could train so poorly that it's better that they sit on the couch, right? Yeah. They could train so poorly that they damage their body and hurt themselves and cause a lot of problems. Well, one thing too, I noticed like, <clears throat> so my dad had to have like knee surgery and like a knee replacement surgery. So, but one thing I was trying to coach him up, like going in, leading into that is like, let's get to the root of like, you know, your, your daily habits and like what you're actually doing with exercises that are, are leading into that problem. Yes. Like, like let's find that out because you know, yeah, you might replace the actual like parts, but you know, the same problem is going to persist if we don't address, you know, what's been leading down that road of like non optimal type of recruitment patterns you've been. Yes. Uh, and you know, the analogy I use in the past of a, of a, a sliding glass door on a track and if it's perfectly balanced on the track, that track's not going to have lots of wear and tear. It's going to take a long time, especially if it's, you know, lubricated properly and all that stuff. But if it's off track just a little bit, in a very short period of time, you start to see wear and tear and chewing up of that track. And the more you push it, the worse that damage is going to come. And so what if you just go replace the track but never fix the balance? Right. You're going to keep running into those issues. <laughs> you know that. Inevitable. <laughs> you just made me laugh right now because that stupid analogy is so stuck in my head that you use that. Because I'm dealing with this, uh, so sand from my house blows in the tracks of my. <laughs> and so just little little grains of sand my are, are in there. My face is popping. And, your head. And, 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 <laughs> and it's enough to get my the track off of my side. Well, and you I'm know. like grinding the shit out of it. And I, every time I do that, I can't help but think this is a stupid analogy Sal uses <laughs> about just barely being off the slightest bit Sal's and how the wear and tear on it. Everywhere you go. But that's but that's literally what's happening right now. I have this these these sliding glass doors that are brand new, like what a year, not even a year and a half They're old. Messed up, and they're getting messed up because the the we have a lot of wind out there, and it blows sand, 
uh, and the sand gets in the little bits of the track mm. like that, and then it's uh, the track is slightly off, and then it's starting to grind it, and they feel they they slide like they're forty year old sliders, yep. but they're only a year old. And I every time I find myself fighting with it, that's the thing that goes through my <laughs> head every time. Just you just about, reminded me of it. Saying you just that. think about me all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, I had nice. I had a client once. I remember where um, she was a, a you know business person executive, and she always wore heels. She liked the way they look, whatever. And we had identified some movement pattern issues, and so she said, "You know what I'm gonna do." I'm going to start wearing flats for a while. But she went from heels to flats too quickly, and she developed um, issues with her feet. She started getting plantar fasciitis. I'm like, well, that's going to take time to work back yeah. because you have to unlearn. Your body has to unlearn recruitment patterns, and it's developed tightness in particular areas and compens you know, compensations in other areas. And so we got to kind of unlearn that. So the reason why I'm saying this is if you don't focus on your technique and form, now and you're not because you're like I'm just getting stronger I'm getting great results and you know that little bit of nagging pain is not a big deal if I warm up or massage it I'm going to keep going not only are you kicking the can down the road you're you're creating a potentially bigger problem later on because then when you try and back out man it's going to take a while like when I went from you know I deadlifted for so long I love deadlifting right but I went for so long with this alternate mm -hmm. grip with the right hand forward left hand back that when I I had developed I saw some pictures of myself from the back and I saw a little bit of a developmental issue in my erector spinae muscles. So then I went to this kind of double overhand uh, hook grip. Do you know how long it took me to get used to be able to pull this way where it didn't inflame my arm and cause problems? Because yeah. I had gotten so strong with doing it a particular way. Yeah. It took me like two years of training a particular way. Had I just done that right out the gates, I would have not lost those two years of, you know, trying to fix it. That's what they tell you, like, if you get into like a sport like golf, like how important it is to have like a coach like – set you up from the very beginning. Don't they say it's harder to, yeah. to teach someone to swing who oh, swings yeah. poorly than somebody who doesn't Yeah, if you've, already, if you've already started to swing and get some sort of contact to, to have to unlearn all those bad habits to start them all over, it's like already start. It's like starting back square one. Yeah. How frustrating is that if you've been playing golf for three or four years with your buddies trying to get better and better and then all of a sudden you decide, okay, I'm going to take this really serious. You get a golf coach and he's like, okay, everything you're doing is wrong. Let's, <laughs> let's start here. And then you have to completely regress oh, no. your game. Yeah, I brought this up like before, but like when I was learning guitar on my own, it and I didn't set myself up for success with that. It like totally capped my potential, and, and it's like at a certain point it catches up to you. You can only um, work with what you've created for so long, uh, and that that's one of a frustration I've had with it because it's like, man, if I would have just taken the time to really learn how to hold my hand properly, like work my way through scales, like all that kind of stuff. But like to, to go back, it's like I'm starting all over yeah. again. I'm so glad you said That's why you capped. become a rock star, by the I'm way. So, I'm so glad <laughs> That's why I'm here you said it though like that, so Justin, and you, you gave that analogy of capping your potential. Because sometimes when we talk about this, I don't ever want to come off like we're, we're fear-mongering people from lifting sure, or exercising. Sure. Like, oh my God, I listen to Mind Pump. I'm so afraid to exercise or do anything. No, you're right. I don't want to hurt myself, right? I don't ever want to come off that way. But- what you just said is to me that's the minimum the minimal thing that will happen if you don't address this. You'll cap so if, your you, if you just say, um, "Okay, I'm going to go exercise." F what the guys say, um, and, and, and some exercise is better than no exercise, and that's you decide that's your attitude. Okay, well maybe you go and you don't get hurt, and maybe you lose a few pounds, but you will cap your 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 potential of what you could have reached had you laid the, the solid foundation. Think about it this way: yeah. um, you you already know how to use a shovel. Okay, but there's a month training course to learn how to use a backhoe. And you're like, no, I just want to start digging right now. Initially, you're going to dig faster with the shovel, but you're only going to get so fast. You're only going to be able to dig so much because a backhoe is so much more efficient. And so that's kind of what we're communicating. There's efficiencies, there's you know injury risk, there's potential, and proper technique and form has been established as the best ways to get your maximum potential. And you're right, Adam, at the very least – Maybe you don't hurt yourself, which I think you will over time, but maybe you don't. Well, you're just never going to get to your full, your full potential. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's Mind Pump time. Here's the giveaway for today's episode. It's MAPS Anabolic, the program that started it all. Uh, we're going to give away for free to one of you lucky viewers. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section and you'll get free access to MAPS Anabolic. Also, we got a sale going on till the 14th. This one's crazy now. We've taken through the history of selling MAPS programs. We've figured out the most popular two program combos that people like to get. For example, MAPS Aesthetic and MAPS Split. People love getting those two programs together. But we have a lot of these two program combos. We've identified them and here's what we've done. Each one 
is only $99.99, okay? So that's less than the cost of one program usually. So you can get two for the price of one. If you go to mapsaugust.com, you can check out all the two program combos that we put together. And again, pick one of them, pick three of them. It doesn't matter. Each one is only $99.99. And again, this ends on the 14th. One more time, it's mapsaugust.com. All right, here comes the show. Anyway, I got to tell you guys a story that um, very frustrating for me and laughable. Very, very laughable. So I got to tell you, let me paint the picture. <laughs> laughable first. while you were in it or now after Dude, the fact? Dude, while I'm in it I'm, okay. and afterwards. And it's just it's just one of those, I just don't understand it. I don't get it. So I'll paint the, the picture first. So uh, we had just bought some new couches for our living living room area. And so the old couches that we had, um, these really nice long couches. They have the, uh, the like, like, what are they? Electronic power to, 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 so you can recline. So big, heavy couches. They're nice, but Jessica wanted new ones. We kind of changed the style. So we bought some new ones. And my parents are like, hey, we'll take those old ones. So I'm like, perfect. We'll give you guys these old ones. So my dad was supposed to come and pick them up, and I'm supposed to help him and all that stuff. And then he gets COVID, right? So my dad had COVID. He was sick for, and it wasn't severe, um, but he was out. He was out for about a week and a half. And, you know, while he's sick, he's like, oh, I don't feel good. And he's like, you know, after he started getting a little better, uh, I hate it. I feel so weak. I haven't been able to move. I have low energy or whatever. Finally, symptoms were mostly gone. He tested negative uh, for a few days in a row. And so he's like, hey, <clears throat> let me come pick up those couches. I said, all right, dad. So my parents show up. And as soon as my dad, he brings his, he has a work van, right? And we're going to do one couch at a time because we couldn't fit both. So as soon as he gets out of the van, he gets out and he's kind of walking crooked. So my, for a lot of people don't know, my dad's got like arthritis up and down his spine and He's been on disability for a while. He's been working hard labor since he was nine years old. So already he's walking out kind of like, Ugh, like this and I'm helping him stretch his back or whatever. And he's like, oh, I feel terrible. I've been sitting on the couch all week or whatever. So I'm like, okay, you know, you know that's kind of sucks. And he's like, let's go get these, let's go get these couches and put them in, in the, in the van and take them to my house and whatever. So we're picking up these big ass, awkward ass couches. Now remember my dad walking kind of cricket because his back hurts. He's 67 years old, just got over COVID. We're picking these couches. We're carrying them into the van. And I i mean, the underneath the couch is very awkward to hold. It's like a wood plank. My fingers feel like the circulation's cutting off. I feel like my bottom of my bicep's starting to strain. And I'm looking at my dad, and he's like whistling, literally whistling as we're walking. So I'm like, this, what the, f all right, whatever. Load up in the van, take it to his house. We got to take the couch out of his, his, his old couch out, maneuvering around the hallway, through the doors, have to pick it up. This entire time, my dad's like, it's like he's just chilling. And I'm in pain. My hands hurt. <laughs> I start laughing. And my dad's like, why are you laughing? I said, I don't understand how. I said, you just got out of COVID. You're 67. I've seen your x-rays. You got arthritis all over the place. How in the hell are you able to do this? And we just start cracking up. And I get home. I tell my son. And I remember I told you times when my, da my, my dad did that demonstration yeah, for my yeah. son. And we're just sitting there like, I don't understand. I didn't get that. I don't know where those genetics went. <laughs> so obviously there, the, obviously there there's is a, a things, uh, genetic component, but do you think there's like a generational thing there too? Yes. Yeah, dude. Like we were, before we got on air, I was showing you I guys. I think it's both for sure. I was showing you guys the uh, documentary that came out recently, the Nolan Ryan one. I think it's called Facing Nolan uh, on Apple TV. It was really good. And, uh, you know, you're talking about a guy who pitched into his mid-40s. He, he was setting records in his mid-40s still, throwing 105, 108-mile-an-hour fastballs, pitched a no-hitter in his 40s. Playing a whole game. Yeah, and yeah, playing full back. So back in his time, okay, nowadays pitchers come out after a pitch count. Like every team has like, okay, this guy, right. once he gets to 105, I don't care how good of a game he is, I don't care what's going on, you know, you know they pull him out. Unless it's maybe the World Series. I mean, 99% of the time they pull the guy out. Back then, it wasn't like that. If you're pitching a good game, you pitch the whole game. Even if it Keep went going. 14, 15, 16 innings, you you pitch. And so he grew up in that era, and they they talk about like him playing, and pain was just normal. He mm -hmm. just like back then it was just assumed that this is very hard on your body. Part of what makes you great is the ability to go through all that. And I sometimes think that that must be like a generation. I thing. think so. Didn't Nolan Ryan? You said grew up on a farm mm -hmm. and do all that yeah, too, yeah, yeah. all that training. Yeah, yeah. I think that plays a role too because you know, as I was talking to my dad about this, and I like I said, I started laughing. He's like, "Why are you laughing?" And I'm like, "I lift weights five days a week. I've been training hard since I was 14. I could pull 550 pounds off the ground." maneuvering and carrying this heavy ass couch. I feel like my hands are going to break. You know, I'm hurting my back sore. I'm like, 
I saw you get out of the car. You already have her back. You've been sick and you're doing this. And we're laughing. And he goes, you know, he goes, uh, you don't, he goes, the way I grew up. And they start telling me stories about when he was 14 years old. When he was 14 years old, they would dig, they'd have to dig holes. Mm -hmm. And it was all day long. And he goes, it was so mm -hmm. hot. We'd be in our underwear doing this and just digging. And then he tells me the story of his cousin. He goes, I have a cousin who's, who was older than him. He goes, if you looked at him, you think to yourself, this guy's going to die. Sunk in. You know, remember they were poor. Very low nutrition. He's like, the guy weighed maybe 110 pounds. He goes, but I swear to God, he would dig holes from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. nonstop. And we used to always laugh, like, how's this guy keep doing it? And he goes, it was just, he goes, it was just different. We just grew up different. Yeah, I mean, my mom's like that a bit too. She's just a go, go workhorse, like always just doing things. I think too, and I brought this up before, but like farm, like anybody that grew up on a farm, that played football, like hands down, were some of the best athletes I've ever been a part of. Like they're just like the toughest, you know, they could handle the most. They were always fresh in the fourth quarter. And it, I really just think it's just that exposure of just constant labor and like being able to like understand leverage, like being able to just grit it out and like having the work capacity, like all those factors of like, you know, just, just decades of, of mastering all of those little uncomfortable situations. Like it set them up to be like Excel passer. Yeah, I, I think it's the, the discipline to get the mindset, up consistently yeah, for sure early. Yeah. doesn't matter about the weather, the, all of the stuff that you do on a form. So much of it is this like uh grinding long isometric type of strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talk about the the importance of like grip strength oh, and yeah. stuff like that. Like working. Oh, you ever shark you shake shake one of their hands. Yeah. It's you, like you're grabbing a, a you brick. shake it and you shark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right afterwards. I, I couldn't say that properly. I was thinking about it. You know, talking about uh generations, so I read an interesting article about Gen Z. Um supposedly we are starting to see a, a shift in the usage of social media. Like how? Going the opposite direction. Using less? Yes. Oh, wow. Great. And this is the first time that I have seen anything come out in regards to that. Most everything has been like it's getting crazier, longer hours, more time That's on interesting. It. They are starting. So for, according to this article, they're starting to use some of these popular platforms less and less for interacting with friends. So for example, if maybe they're on Instagram still, but they use it just to follow their handful of like super Instagram celebrities. So they're still using it to consume uh, some content. content, but not interact and really utilize and be active. You would say on that. Yeah. They're not, and they're, and they're using more. There's a, there's actually a platform called be real that I'm not even familiar with. That is a more common platform they use to interact with each other. And I just think that's because they're, they're quickly figuring out with what we see happening right now, where people are digging up old tweets and old things. And they're like, you know what, we got to get away from this. Like, like putting our stuff out there for the whole world to see. And if we're going to communicate things like that, be it more Dude, private, yeah. yeah, more private. Sure. They use these platforms a little bit to see what's going on, but they're not as active as with the, the making previous, it as public. Yeah. As the previous generation. Well, that gives me hope, man. Yeah. Like, like rebelling against a lot of this, like overarching, like we want to see every little last thing that you're doing like that. I, as me as a kid, I would be, that would freak me out. Well, I'd be like, I just want to hang out with my friends and do my own thing. Well, I'm going to crap on some of this here for a second, not specifically, but just the hope part, because I just read an article and this <laughs> is, this is happening all over the world. This younger generation is coming up and I know it's becoming a problem in, uh, in Korea in China, in the U S where this generation is coming up and they're just, they don't want to work. They're just chill. Just they want to live a basic life. I just want to make just enough so I can play video games and hang out. This is actually becoming an issue in uh, China, Japan, and Korea, I've been reading. Mm -hmm. And here in the U.S., there's this new thing called, um, I think it's called like quiet quitting. Or uh, I'm going to look it up right now. There's a term for it where they, they oh, yeah, quiet quitting. Have you heard of this term? Mm -mm. A quiet quit? No. It's the most passive aggressive, wimpy, weak thing I've ever heard in my entire life. You work at a company. And you're like, you know what? I'm not going to quit, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to really put much effort. I'm going to do the bare minimum, collect my check, and then just kind of do my thing. And then if they fire me, they fire me. And they called quiet quit. That's so weak. And it's this big, yeah, it's this big thing. I mean, it's, it's that's that shit's been happening forever, but they've actually they have a term for they it. They have now. a term for it, and it's now like a popular thing to do. Yeah, and they're saying it's because you know, oh, work is you know, it's it's not all it's cut quite you know cut out to be. Why should I perform for this company when I don't care and I think that I think that's so insane. I've never had a job I didn't try. 
I mean, I worked a lot of, I mean, I washed dishes and I did, you know, a lot of stuff I Well, I don't think, I think, wasn't my passion. I think we, we're in an interesting time where if you're somebody in your 20s or even teens, that you, most people either have a friend or know somebody who knows somebody who is in their age group, who has reached some level of fame and has built a a business where they're potentially making millions of dollars. What do you mean, like social media stuff? Yeah, oh. like that. I mean, that just didn't exist. In our, I mean, when you were twenty, did you know any twenty year olds that were famous, popular, or had a lot of money? No, Doogie Howser. But you, I, so I was, I was <laughs> reading was this thing on like also like exotic cars. Like some of the most common people that are buying exotic cars are like teenagers. Young kids, young influencers. See, I don't, that, I don't mind that. It's the, it's because I, I was reading. Yeah, but what, what my point of bringing that up to your point is that when you start to see that, oh, I see that becomes more grass is greener type. Deal. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, like if I can't have that, then at this job where well, I, have, I work hard. Yeah, I got to work I, hard at this job. Got to wait. Till I got my buddy who all he has to do is me. post some mm. cool pictures on Instagram and say some some cool quotes, and he's got millions of followers, and making all this money, and living so this weird. lifestyle. Here, I have to go to this job where I'm. You know, printing stuff all day long or photocopying it, and I'm having to do bullshit labor work. I was talking to my buddy who I don't want to say too much because he'll people will know who I'm talking about, but he has a business and he's hiring a lot of people in this age group. Mm -hmm. And the questions that they ask in the first interview, he's like, I would have never had the gut. I would have never asked these questions. Like the first question they ask is, "How many breaks do I get? How long? How long is lunch?" So, so this is right out the gates. Like vacation time, like what does that look yeah, like? Yeah, well, and you're not like getting hired. How long does it take to get promoted? Yeah, like I would have never asked these questions on an interview. I, I these so, are questions I would ask yeah, no after okay, I add in kicked the, ass. Add in the fact of what I said too, and then also add in the fact that we are on an unprecedented bull run. Right, ten years of like prosperity sure. of you put money in real estate, you put money yeah, in stocks, was making money. Everybody is winning. You got into social media early, you're winning. Like right. we have not gone through a really rough time yet and it's going to be really interesting because, you know, what goes up must come down and eventually when you know, and if you were think about that, in the last 9 to 10 years, if you were like a 10-year-old, now you're 20 something and that's what you've seen for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, is nothing but prosperity and winning and people being able to stay home and well, make all right. this money. They had all those other opportunities. Like they had more uh, ways that they could. Well, I guess I could go over here. Could, but guess what? When times are hard now, you're not going to have those options. You got to sing a whole different team. You know, I get, I get that. I get all the. There's all these options. You know, but there's also this pride thing where, look, if I'm going to work for somebody, even if this is a temporary job, which you know I've had those. Right, I haven't always been in fitness. Mm -hmm. I always look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a good job. Right. I'm going to do a good job because that's what I'm here to do. And I'm not going to do a half-assed job. I'm always going to try and do my best, even though I'm going to leave. Because my attitude was, I want to leave and have and this person have a good impression of me. Mm -hmm. And I want my work to speak for itself. This is when I washed dishes. This is when I you know, did filing. And but don't you stuff. think so much of that is less of your character and more of how you've been conditioned because of the culture when yeah. you were raised? Right, the culture around the time. Well, you're talking about the late '90s, mid '90s, the late '90s when you really yeah, got. We into didn't grow up in a depression. I, yeah, it wasn't a depression, but it wasn't a boom like you have what you've had the last ten years. It hasn't. It wasn't with social media where there was. You know, how many people are making millions of dollars from Instagram, Facebook, you know, Twitter, Stitch? I mean, all these are Twitch, all these freaking platforms that they could literally sit at home and make them. That didn't exist just yeah, a but decade I, ago. I think it has uh, maybe some of that, but also just the way some kids are being raised. Like you ever hear teachers talk about like younger generations? How like when when I was a kid, you know, the teacher would say something to you. Now, if you say the same thing, uh oh, gonna go tell mom going to get in big trouble. Like, you know, a boss. Have you guys ever had a boss yell at you? All the time. Yeah, the power dynamic totally shifted, for sure. It's very interesting. I, I think it, it is a cultural shift, but I don't know if it's because maybe it is part of, you know, good times, but I think it's part of maybe something else. I mean, parents time will kids. tell, right? Because, uh, you know, I, I think uh, harder times are ahead of us, right? And, and <laughs> They're going to be a for rude awakening. Too. Well, that's okay. what I'm, you know. Yeah. Well, it's you know when there's so many Bounces opportunities. What are we seeing right now? Right, you're seeing all these big companies, right, starting to lay off, like, and less and less people are going to have that opportunity. It's when when jobs are so easy to find, it's one thing, but when that gets harder and harder, and more and more layoffs, and there'll be it'll be it'll finally shift over in the now the, now now here's my here's like the part of uh, part of this that makes me say, hey, look, I'm not that different, right? I think if you go back generationally, that's always been the case. Because I, what did I just talk about? Yeah. I just talked about my dad. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am a massive 
pussy compared to my dad. Massive. Like, for sure, he worked way harder, yeah. would sacrifice way more than I would have at the ages when he was doing those things. So I think maybe each generation gets that way unless, you know, you kind of have to reverse it. So maybe that's just what's happening, you know. And every generation always complains about the younger one, right? Yeah. How much, like, weaker they are and how much less – how much they don't work as hard and that kind of stuff. It's just generalizations. I mean, for the most part, because you do see examples of kids that are really getting after it. And it's like, it's exciting to see that. But uh, I had to bring this up because um, Adam, I remember you had this, this sort of clause for marriage, right? So after (laughs) every five, 10 years or something, you had this sort of like to renew the lease, yeah, renew the lease kind of a thing. But uh, it was funny because I was looking at, okay, way back in the day, like medieval times, so they, I guess when, whenever there was like a marital dispute where they were like going to, you know, figure out, um, how they were going to deal with this, they didn't have divorce. They didn't have ways to, to get out of these sort of wedlocks. And so it, like in Germany, they had actual, like, like, uh, um, they basically orchestrated a duel between the wife and the husband. And then they had like all these different weird parameters where like a lot of the pictures show like uh, the, the, the husband would be like in a hole and he'd have like a certain weapon and then she'd have a certain weapon. Oh, they give him an advantage. They give him some kind of slight advantage. And then they'd be (laughs) like beating the shit out of each other. Crazy, right? Like that's that's real. where we, yeah, this, this was not that long ago. I mean, it was a long time ago, but to like, on that level, like to <laughs> to fight your wife, like physically. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of divorced people thinking right now, I fucking would have done like, that wow, shit. Wow, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> I would have taken his yeah, head yeah. right off. Could have signed me up for that. I would have done that for yeah, sure. Yeah, like screw all the counseling and all that. Like, let's uh let's duel. Hey, speaking of old stuff, so I really because I think this is this is I think this quote comes from like the fifteen hundreds, I believe, is where the origin is. Have you heard you guys have heard of the Jack of all trades? Yeah. Thing? Okay. Do you know how that quote goes? And what it means? Well, Jack. I know what it means. Okay, like, well, tell me. So first of all, finish, Jack is finish, significant. Finish the quote. Jack of all trades, king of none or something. You're a master, master of, none. Master master of none. none. Okay. Do you know that's not the full quote? What is it? Because what do you think that means, right? The Jack, a Jack of all trades, a master of none, right? Jack, well, the, in really other words, it's better to be a master, right? Than it yeah. to be just yeah, somebody who's... Yeah, because in, the, in, the, in a deck of cards, you have a king, queen, and a jack. So Jack is good, but it ain't a king. So you're kind of good at a lot of stuff, or you could be a king at one point. But thing. then you could call him a renaissance man. So the, the full time. quote is actually the... But a... a Okay, a jack of all trades... Um, a jack of all trades or a master of none, but a jack of all trades is a, ba- a better than a master of one. That's, That's the whole thing? Yeah. So they're actually, the quote, people use it in the opposite direction. You oh, normally use better. it like, oh, you're not very good because you're good at a bunch of little yeah. things, but you're not a master at one. That's normally how people use it, right? Because somebody has spread. How did yeah, that yeah, get yeah. so misquoted? But it's actually the opposite is what the Look it up, Doug, so they guys can actually got, read it and I see have it. A, I have a theory. I have a theory why it changed. If you go back in time, it was important to know a lot of different skills. But as societies have advanced- it becomes more and more valuable Changed. to yeah. be specialized mm-hmm. in one thing and be really good at that one thing. Mm. That's maybe why it might well, like self sufficiency. I mean, and, I know I've yeah. used that, and it, it, I I saw something I read somewhere. Look at, but oftentimes Jack- better than a master of one. Oh wow, it was a compliment. Isn't that oh, funny? Wow, yeah. oh, and I guarantee strange. we've all probably used it. Oh, this the, is it's Shakespeare. Oh, totally, that's a Shakespeare quote. It says, hmm. "I wonder where he said it in." Interesting. Is well, it, is it a, I know it's old. I know it goes way back. I didn't know. I didn't know if it was the origin was actually Shakespeare. Doesn't that make sense though? That 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 the value in the past was that you could, you know, you knew how to build a house, you knew how to fish, you knew how to hunt, you know how to do, you know, fix, you know, your wagon and you know tend to your horses. But then as society advanced, like it's more valuable to really know one thing. Like even today, you get, get a job in in a, in a you know, in America and you want to get really Well, successful. now you're making me want to go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. I went down the rabbit hole a little bit with this because I thought it was interesting. That's just my Because I have used it wrong so so many times and had no idea that that's, it's actually the opposite of how most people use it. So um, it's in reference to Shakespeare. Okay. And yeah. it was by a guy named Robert Greene. No, 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 no. Ro- oh, you know, in 1950, it's, it's another Robert Greene. In, uh, in 1592. That's the, okay, that's where I got it. Yeah, it's called Greene's Groats Worth of Wit. It's his wow. little book. When was the the printing press invented? I uh, don't know. Yeah, look that up. Boy, that changed a lot when that happened. Then people could read stuff like this and and learn. You know what I mean? 
Because sayings like that, well, I mean, it doesn't sound like that big of a deal now. 1436. But. Yeah, see? I mean, it, it still rings true kind of today when you, if you actually really think about it. I mean, there's t tons of value of being a, a jack. You're not, Obviously, you're not the king or the master of the best, but mm -hmm. pretty good at a lot of things versus being just really good at one thing. You, know, you have a lot of value in that one thing, but then you're terrible at everything else. Yeah. Well, you're, you're a lot more independent uh, in that regard. Yeah. yeah. But, it, but it, it, yeah. market-wise... Like economically, if you really, if you want to make a lot of money, be very successful, usually you're specialized. I mean, isn't that fascinating sure. though? I've never heard anybody use that correctly. Yeah. Ever. Have you ever heard somebody nope. using that? Nope. I, that's why I knew you guys would finish it the same way I would have finished it, but there's literally another sentence right yeah. after that. Well, I like, I, I like to learn about the origins of certain sayings because sometimes the origins are terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like rule of thumb. You guys know what rule of thumb is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a law. Well, it there's like a switch and then like a stick. It was I've, a law that you yeah, couldn't hit your thickness. wife. You couldn't hit your wife with a stick that was wider than your thumb. That was yeah. a freaking law. That was a law. Listen, guys, we're not barbarians here. Yeah. Use a skinny stick over there. That's that'll so do it. This, mm -mm, this, yeah. mm. that's that's where that came from. Yeah, I've seen people take quotes of like Hitler, and that then they put it and they make you think it's like this super. Oh, like and a, then you tell people it's all motivation. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. There was like, yeah, Ooh. yeah. And you're like, yeah, Hitler said that. <laughs> I got too excited about that quote. Whoops. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> uh, that's wow. messed up. Well, hey, so um, so I I do want to comment, Adam, on your your lack of pants. I, I guess you didn't. You decided <laughs> yeah, I didn't not get to. to yeah, you I'm get, dressed for comfort. It's casual today. Friday over yeah, here. Yeah, we're, we're here for Wednesday. In slacks. Check I didn't get the memo. These here. are the these are the meta. The Viore meta. Oh, oh I thought they were slacks. Bro, look at them. Look how nice they are. You wearing the same thing too? Stretchy, yeah, bro. They they so, look they, they're like professional looking slacks. Yeah. But they're also I could totally work out in these if I wanted to. Not I would, but I could look at stretchy and comfortable. I have a bunch of times. I yeah. bought I bought six pairs. So I knew he was on that the meta kick with the slacks, but I didn't know that you rocked those yeah. too. You like I so I don't have a pair of those. I, I bought six of them, dude. That's all I wear now. They're the comfiest yeah. ones by far. I don't know. I'd I prefer them but like Is that because Jessica's there. dressing you now or are you doing most no, of No, she doesn't dress me. She <laughs> undresses me. <laughs> send that one to that clip to her Doug no it's um uh yeah. you know I just for professionalism right to look good yeah, yeah. they look really really good yeah. they feel like sweats but they don't look like sweats of course they're they're other stuff they have other stuff that's more comfortable or more whatever I scream unprofessional no you look <laughs> I'm gonna like, I'm gonna just milk it until the HR thing happens right no you, you look like you look like um like like a like grunge 1990. Something well, I'm, well, the the flannel is unplanned. It was it's just been cold in the studio lately. I mean, we've been warm outside, but then I it's cold at my house. Then you get here, it's hot in the parking lot. Then I walk in here, and then it's ice cold in here. And I'm not you're complaining, always, Doug, because I'd rather that's, it be that's weird. I'm I've been sweating in here. I think Justin. Well, looks, you're lifting my right back's before. always wet. Dude. I'm not <laughs> lifting. I'm not lifting before we record, though. You are though. Yeah. Doug, Doug too. Look, Doug's in shorts. Well, Doug also lifted before. It's a major difference. If I lift before we yeah, podcast, uh, yeah. uh, have yeah, you guys ever well, noticed he, this? Heats, uh, have yeah. you guys ever noticed about the sauna? If because I'll do sauna sometimes in the morning, I'm hot the whole day. Yeah, from mm -hmm. that. Why you notice that from working out? If mm -hmm. I work out, if I were to work out, like my, my body temperature stays much higher mm -hmm. throughout the day than if I if I don't work out till way yeah. later in the afternoon. Hey, so um, did you guys see that? Hear about the Elon hip piece? Yes. or whatever, and his counter. Yes. Well, first of all. I, I thought it was true. I brought it up to you. And yeah. then you were like, that's not true. It's bullshit. I'm like, oh, really? Because I've only read, at that point, I had only read the hit piece that was coming <sighs> was out. And and so basically, it said, convincing. it said that he had this long affair with the Google CEO founder, his, his wife. wife. Yeah. And, and they're friends and it's terrible. And supposedly at one point when Elon, uh, Elon was bleeding money with Tesla, she was floating him money to keep him, keep his business afloat and stuff like that. And they were having this long old yeah. affair. And so that I had read that and I hadn't read anything else yet. And I was like, dude, you guys see the thing on Elon? And you're like, oh, it's bullshit. And then literally later on that day, I see the freaking selfie of him partying with the dude from Google. And they're all like, no, nah, it's bullshit. So all these like, <laughs> dude, I just imagine like all these media companies now, like going through like old like Hollywood studios and just just snatching all the fictional writers. You, you know, the Bro, hired. So Me is there no truth to that story, Sal, at all? That I don't know. That okay, so according to Elon Like how can they do that? How can they take something completely fabricated like that? Well he said it I mean what's that what is it when you uh you could sue someone for defamation. So yeah. I mm -hmm. think he might actually sue them. But media has become do you know that the the are the public's trust in media Oh it's crazy. It's the lowest it's ever been. As and it should be. It's the media's own fault. <laughs> they they no longer report. They are all now propaganda vehicles. Yeah. They really are. And it's crazy. You know, remember we had the guy on? Well, I mean, okay. And this isn't me defending him, but they, I mean, they are for-profit businesses. 
and we live in the time and era of attention is it's this yeah. is we it, it it's all about how much attention you can right. get from people. You're right. And so it's a war out there. YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, everything. That's like part that. of it. And so they would they would be obsolete if they didn't. Listen, that's part of it. But I feel the same way about them that I feel about doctors that do like you ever seen yeah, people with, on TV with medication and stuff. Or like just that. crazy plastic yeah. surgeries and you're like the doctor never said no to you? Like why do they keep doing this, right? Mm -hmm. There's I understand that the consumer can say I want this and the producer provider can be like sure. But there's also a level of integrity there. Like, look, we work with fitness. We sell fitness programs. I know us. Uh, if it made us a billion dollars, I wouldn't sell a program that would hurt people. Yeah. Right? Like, that's our integrity. Even if people demanded it and wanted it, I wouldn't do it. I mean, the, the truth is, though, this is the drawbacks of a capitalist society. I mean, you're making the case by going the opposite direction of why like, why some people Oh, I'm not saying we should regulate it. I'm just saying. I know. But, just, I mean, that's what happens, right? If you make something for profit. You're, there's going to be a percentage of people that are going to be for profit well, if, and their integrity is going to go out the window. I mean, come on. We see it in every industry. It's half of what motivated us to turn these mics on. Of course. So it's, 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 but that's what I, I, mean, I think it'll correct. But that's, I, so that's me. That's yeah. right. I mean, I, I believe that the, we, we just, we're in this weird transition of, you know, we, we, we grew up with the, you know, Fox and CNNs and like they dominated our news and this is the beginning, right? This is the beginning of the end for them of first it happens with all this distrust. Yeah. Then that opens the door for somebody else to come through and actually build something that people yeah. do believe I, in. And trust. I want to be yeah, clear. There's some independent, uh, you know, media's sources that are popping up now to, to compete. So it is, you do kind of see that. It's just not nowhere near as popular. No, as well, they know, have such a stranglehold right now. Yeah. Yes. Well. And I exactly. do, and I do want to say this uh, to be very clear. I'm not saying that we should have a not, a not for profit, media, you know, system where they're regulated because then it's just propaganda, but for, di but different, right? right. Yep. It's just propaganda different, but it's crazy to me because you could just make something up. And then the crazier part is that people will read it and they, we get fooled into thinking, oh, that's what's like when we had the guy on the, the trainer, the run like a dog guy. Yeah. Like when he told me, like when he was, when he was on and he's like, that's not even like one tenth of what well, I do, I was like, well, real course. journalism. And I mean, there used to be like, I don't know if it's standards. Yeah. There, there used to be you know, to the point where they would lose their job if they got one little thing incorrect. And it was, it's just like, I don't see any kind of integrity in that direction anymore. That's crazy to me. Yeah, it's crazy. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm not defending Elon because I know him. I don't know who he is. He could very well be a terrible person and a bad dad or whatever, but it is obvious that they are after him. Yeah. It is 100% obvious that Elon has become an enemy of a lot of these media companies because of his political opinions. Once you open that out, right? Once you put that out there, you open yourself up, and the media, man, they can. Well, they how, he, how he handles it is so hilarious. Epic, like like, like him putting that picture out at the party yeah. with him. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like epic. So what what I haven't decided yet, as far as me judging Elon on his character, because I don't know him either, is how much of it does he not like or want or promote himself, like. Right. It's, it's probably worked in his benefit for the most part, even though you think like, oh, it's a hit piece. It's coming out. Yeah. It's like now we're all talking about him. And so yeah. is everybody else. And his stock yeah. is probably still rising. Yeah. You know the, only, like, the only thing I will say about him is he's one of the greatest entrepreneurs. I mean, the guy's created multiple billion dollar businesses. I don't know anything else about the guy yeah. personally, right. but well, it is crazy. Like every other professional athlete or whatever. It's like, you know, you're going to go back and, and go through the list of like how many of the greatest of all time were actually good people too outside of like playing their sports. Like, yeah. you know, like where, can we just like acknowledge like some people's strengths? And just I think he's doing there? God's work by making sure we don't have this population collapse. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's one thing I was like, he's got like nine kids scratching my head. I'm like, you're just justifying like banging. He's a bunch the perfect of guy to get yeah. away with that. You know what I'm saying? That comment was so funny. Yeah. I'm like, come on, bro. <laughs> trying to be, what's he trying to be Genghis Khan? <laughs> so, so dumb. So yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, you guys, you guys get the try tips from butcher box too, right? Oh, yeah. that, is that your most common one? Oh, oh yeah. dude. Okay, sorry. I don't mean to hijack your commercial, but I've been waiting for us to bring up Butcher Box because I I got the brisket just recently out of there, and I was gonna smoke it. And when you smoke brisket, it's like a really long process. Didn't work out. Um, and so I was searching for uh, ways to cook the brisket, like either an Instapot or a faster way to do it. Had no idea about this. Okay, I, I wish I did. I would have. We would have. I've used this as a commercial before. 
ButcherBox has created a YouTube channel dedicated to helping you cook all their meats. Oh, what? Awesome. And their healthy, good recipes. Like a le legit chef is on there. Did and you find a brisket yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. So I did a brisket one that was on there. But I I mean, I went down the rabbit hole after that. I went, oh my God, this whole time I've like been looking at different ways. Because some of their cuts are different. Some of their, their meats taste different. I mean, it's just, so they have all these great recipes on there that you can follow along. And it's relatively a small channel, but it's very professionally done. So I don't think they've been doing it that long. Long, and I don't think anyone's blown it brisket up. But is, it's a brisket is great idea. Brisket's been hit or miss for us. I, oh. I, I just don't know how to cook it consistently. Like we'll make it, and there's sometimes you great. Get like other times, slow time. cook it for a long time. That's typically just, right. Yeah, but other times we made it dry. So that one's a tough one. Do the, try the Instapot. That's not what I did on this one, but I mean, Instapot's a great one because brisket does take a long time. Yeah. And so if you're not going to slow smoke it for 12 hours plus or what like that. Then I, my next suggestion would yeah. be like an instant pot or this recipe. I forget what you call Doug. What's the name of that pot? We have one at the Truckee House. It's the big orange pot. There's a name for that type of a pot. Crock pot? Not a crock pot. It's called something else. Mm -hmm. He says it in this video. So if you actually look up butcher bro butcher box brisket recipe, it's not a Dutch oven. Is it? Oh yeah, Dutch yes, oven. Dutch That's oven. It. Dutch That's oven. It, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's what a Dutch oven was. I thought that was when you hold the covers over your <laughs> wife's head and fart. <laughs> I thought that was a Dutch oven. I swear to God, when I said Dutch oven, I know Justin was like, <laughs> he looked right. That's at not me what a Dutch oven is. That's why I always thought a Dutch <laughs> that oven. is a Dutch oven. Oh yeah, yeah. You how did that? How did that get? How did that you get? Put on, you no put idea. on clogs in bed and then you fart and put the sheets. Yeah, in your head. I, don't, I mean that's <laughs> what I. That's oven. always what I. Mean. <laughs> you, you just, just cook. Something I like, like kind of chuckled and laughed when he said, "Oh, did I get the Dutch oven?" I'm like, "What? Rub on the dirty Sanchez rub." And you got yourself a brisket right there. Yeah, it's a good time. Anyway, so you know what, Doug. Off air, yeah, you're yeah, too far. Yeah. On oh, air, he's yeah. too far. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, so the, no, I was going to talk about the tri-tip because consistently I sear it on uh, cast iron after I season it. Sear, sear, put it in the oven. It comes out perfect every single time. E mm. Very, very consistent, very mm. easy to make. I want to try That's the gangster move where you have the um, the torch oh, yeah. and then just... Yeah. Oh, dude, it. speaking of meat, boy, did that comment on vegans on the oh, episode. I knew you were going to. Bring a bunch you, of, boy, when bro. you opened that that day, by the way, I love the edit that the guys did and you did, because yeah. Justin didn't even tell us we were doing that. Did you see his edit? Yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 spit out the, yeah, that, that was, was fun. Whole. Vegan diets are some of the worst diets for building muscle. <laughs> Do you believe this guy? <laughs> That, I got a good laugh out of that. Boy, do they? I tell okay, you. So people are religious about their diet. Dude, it's no, so there's, weird. There's two. Okay. Well, I feel like we we critique everything out there. Yeah. There's nothing that we critique, including ourselves and the old things that we used to do. I, I don't think uh, we're, we're biased in any way when it comes to that stuff. I think even when you talk about veganism, never are you saying it's bad or whatever like that. It's like, it's just more difficult. It's a fact. It's more difficult to follow that. Just like ketogenic. We talked the same right, way right. about the ketogenic diet, right? So it blows my mind, the two things, and I think I can't think of any more than the, these two. If we talk about veganism or CrossFitters, mm -hmm. you can always kind of, and I know this is an overgeneralization because what I did see, and I want to commend the people that did do this because there were quite a few people on, underneath that that post that were uh, that were vegans also and said, you know, these guys are making really good points. Yeah. You should listen if you're a vegan. I'm a vegan. I've been a vegan for a long yep. time. It's been difficult for me. So I do want to commend those. Are, and I know that there's, there's a handful or more that are giving a bad rap to the other vegans because what that talking about CrossFit or talk about veganism and you get always these I radical think, people that yeah, yeah, yeah. and people can get religious about almost any diet but I think with veganism it's a little special because there's the added um, I'm doing it because I don't want animals to get hurt. It's way different. We don't get it's, that with keto. No. We bash keto just as even just as evenly as much. Yeah, and it, and when you talk about vegans, they hit and, and look, the truth is this you can follow a very healthy vegan diet. You want to keep it whole food based. It just takes more planning. This is true. It's just nutrient deficiencies are more common. Supplementation tends to be necessary when you're doing this. It's harder to get protein or or a, a good dose of the amount of protein that you need if you're trying to maximize muscle building. That's all true. Can you follow it though? Be very healthy? Yes, you can. It just takes more planning. But when you talk about veganism, boy, does uh, it light some people up. And I think it has to do again with some people are like, look, I don't want to hurt animals. So when you go after that that diet and, and you talk about it the way we do, which I think is still balanced, then they're going to feel attacked. Well, a lot it's of their it, religion. A lot of it too is just you know what you see typically when 
Um, there's like sort of a, a way to get, you know, it's going to cause a reaction with certain people. And some people get like really ramped yeah. up emotionally and they can't recover. So it's like, they won't listen to the, to the latter half of the conversation because they're so heightened up because they're triggered or whatever it is. Like it's it, at that point, like I've had conversations like that start out kind of with a bang. And then it's like, it, yeah. some people just can't recover from that. I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. They, it reminds me of MLM people. And when they get the, and then they've been deep in it, and they've been they've been so indoctrinated that they have all the great talking points to yeah. rebuttal it. You know, what I'm saying yeah. like you like you're. I, there was people that were posting the breakdown of lentils and how many grams of like every nutrient that's yeah. in there, comparison to beef. And I remember sending that over. I'm like, look at this argument. I sent it over to him. I'm like, you seen this? Well, like, you know how many lentils you have to eat? To get Fifty <laughs> grams of protein. Yeah, like six cups of lentils yeah. just to get your. <laughs> Go do that and see how your tummy feels after you eat that. That's much. what I mean. So I mean, but they they have got all these great like talking points or they've 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 memorized game changers you know because they've watched it so many times to rebuttal all the points that people mm -hmm. try to make and it's like to me the easy thing just to say is just like hey it works for me i like it i feel better on it okay great cool yeah. that's mm -hmm. or i do it for moral reasons and awesome support you 100 but when we talk about it and we talk about the difficulties of it or the challenges or comparing whey protein to vegan protein and the science about it boy does it ruffle some feathers man when yeah. it comes to vegans it's yeah, hilarious no, it totally to me. and it looks the, the 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 fail rate on a vegan diet in other words how many people start it and go off of it is the same as any diet. Right. Now, the people that tend to stick to vegan diets are the ones that really do it for those moral reasons. They're not doing it for health. So when I talk to clients who said, hey, I'm going to try this vegan diet, and I ask them why, and they say, oh, it's for weight loss or for health, unless it's like doctor, strongly doctor recommended, then that's when I would have a debate, a discussion with them, I'll say, right? If they said, no, it's for moral reasons, well, that's, listen, okay, let's do the best we possibly can to make this as healthy as possible for you. Let's look at supplementation if needed because you really believe in this. But if it's like, oh, I'm doing this to lose weight, okay. Uh, are there cases where a vegan diet works better for people? Yes, there's always individual variances, but generally speaking, and this is true for all diets, it's balance. Balance works best for most people. You mm -hmm. know the irony of that talking point that all diets fail at 80% with that, I actually think is it falls in its face because what other diet has any sort of uh, moral stand? None, except for that one. Right, right. And so the fact that it has the same as all the diets, and yet there you still have that, you have a percentage of those people that stick to it yeah. for moral reasons, should give it an advantage. Right. You should have an advantage because there is a certain amount of people that regardless if they're getting the nutrients they're supposed well, to, if you, regardless if it's working for them, they're like, I am not going to eat animals. And I said, so that in itself should, well, when should you, give when you, you a, an edge. Well, to, to, be, to be honest, look, when you do control for that and you just look at people who follow it for moral reasons, the fail rate's actually a lot better. It's a lot better than 85%. Um, not, not quite as bad. But again, most people don't do it. Well, and, that would be teasing firmly, them out. I'm saying if you group them all correct. together, they fall in the same category. Correct. So you they should bring that number up. You're right. And you want to know what's funny? There's, uh, there's studies that show that when people drink, when vegans drink, that they're, they're, uh, a high percentage of them will go eat meat afterwards. So their inhibitions go down <laughs> with alcohol. And part of that is I'm going to go. Body eat, just takes over. I'm going to eat a burger or whatever. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Uh, That's so wild. But yeah, it's it's it can be. I would consider it an extreme diet. Although um, I guess mainstream wouldn't consider it an extreme diet. It is. You're you're cutting out. Well, it's promoted you know, by mainstream right now. It's like you see things come in in cycles and waves. Yeah. And this is the the thing is to go all plant based. Yeah. And so we just, as a counterpoint, you got to consider it's difficult to get protein. It, that is a and fact. The thing that annoys me about it is, listen, if you follow it, you like it, works for you, do it. I want you to do it. Yeah. Don't, don't, I'm not trying to convince people that it works for them or they have a moral reason of doing it or they like it or they have great results. All we're trying to do is present it to, uh, what happens is something like that, especially that one has been so politicized and it's being, and it's being touted as so amazing. And it's just not. It's not that amazing. It's not as amazing as you all think it is. It's just like all the rest of them. Yeah. Just like paleo, just like keto, just like IFYM, just like intermittent fat. It's just like every other fad that's out there. It's just as good, and you can make all the same arguments in case for that. At the end of the day, we're just trying to present to the general population that is getting all this noise and help them understand that, listen, if you're doing it because you think it's the best or you heard somebody about this, well, let us present to you some of the pitfalls that's of that. That's right. And That's we do that with every diet. And 100%, we're going to get more negative comments from the <laughs> yeah. vegans after this particular episode. <laughs> oh, I guarantee no it. Yeah, yeah. So we look forward to it. Yeah. All right, check this out. Uh, by now, you've heard of CBD, but here's a problem. 
Most of the companies that sell CBD products suck. You don't even feel it when you take it. Well, that's not the case with Ned. So Ned is full spectrum hemp oil extract, meaning it doesn't just have CBD. It's got all of the benef beneficial cannabinoids that you find in hemp that help reduce inflammation, help with anxiety, sleep, give you a sense of euphoria. Uh, but this one you actually feel, I'm telling you, you try Ned, give it 30 to 45 minutes, you will feel this CBD product. Go check this company out. Head over to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump and go check out their stuff. All right, here comes the show. Our first caller is Carrie from New York. Hi, Carrie. How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my question. My question actually pertains to your MAP symmetry program. So I wanted to kind of get some advice on how I should tweak it for my activity levels. So for some context, I'm 25. I've been working out for about six years, primarily focusing on muscle building. But over the next few months, I kind of want to spend more time fixing my form and working on like more mobility and any imbalances I have. So I actually started personal training school in the beginning of July, and it caused my step count to go from around 3,000 steps a day to about 9,000 steps a day. So we do a lot of hands-on training in this school where I will pretend to be a client for the other students, and they'll do the same thing for me. So I'm doing a lot of various upper and lower body exercises throughout the day. I also do... Uh, mobility. I do two sessions of mobility a day for about 10 minutes a day, and I stretch for 15 minutes a day. So I weigh about 133 pounds. My maintenance is around 2,200 calories, and I have about 160 grams of protein a day. My question is, I don't want to lose all of the muscle I spent all winter building with the increased activity levels. So with my schedule being so full, how do you recommend I incorporate map symmetry into my program without losing um, any muscle or while also including some days for muscle building itself. Yeah. The, the two most important things that I would do um, to offset that is one, if you're already having a lot of volume of activity and you want to add a program to that is I would reduce the volume where you can. So if you can't reduce it in other aspects of your life, then I would do less of the volume that's prescribed in map symmetry. So maybe you can cut the sets down that we recommend by a third, for example, and the second thing would be to bump your calories. Uh, so you want to, because of all the additional activity, I would increase your calories by about two or three hundred a day. Um, and you can honestly, because you're eating so much protein, you don't have to add more protein. You could just add it in the form of carbohydrates or, or fats. And those two things right there should help offset any potential muscle loss that you may experience. You could also modify intensity too. So if you were to follow the program as is you just dramatically reduce uh, the intensity. You know, sometimes we get in this mindset of when we go and we lift that we like, like always have to get after it or sweat or this burn. Uh, nothing is wrong with following the protocol and moving all the weight at 50% of your intensity, even though you, you could do double the weight in every exercise. Just moving like that at that low of an intensity will also help that. So yeah. that's an option and increasing calories would be the, the two things. You may right. find that just by adding 300 calories, even, right. that alone might just do it. I mean, you may find, I mean, you, I'm, I'm seeing you right now. You, you're already, you look pretty lean. So a, a bump of 300 calories with that additional activity, you might just end up building a little muscle. You know, you might not even lose muscle. You might actually build muscle um, as a result of doing that. So I, that's one of the first places I would start. If you're eating 24, are you eating 24 or is that just what your maintenance is? That's a, my maintenance right now is 20, is 22. So I just, earlier this week, I bumped it up to about 24, but I'm still seeing the scale go down. Oh. But it's only about a week. Yeah, I would I'd go up to, all right, so you already bumped it two, so I'd go up to 26. Bump it another 200 and, and then and then see what happens. And then, so with my, the sessions that I have during the class, so some days we focus on lower body, some days we focus on upper body, but I, it's, it's in like a gym setting, so I could pick the weights that I use. So I was thinking, do you think I should kind of use those as like trigger sessions yes. when I can? Yes. Yeah, I'd go real easy. Real light, real easy, just perfect technique and form. Don't treat it like a workout. 100%, that's what I would do. Okay, now yeah. because because you're a trainer, Carrie, do you have MAPS Prime and Prime Pro? I don't. Okay, don't, Adam, calm down. <laughs> I'm going to send those to you right now, okay? Because I think those will bring you the most value as a trainer. Also, I really like that poster in the back of your room. That's really cool. Oh, my tapestry? Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. Thanks. It's supposed to give a chill vibe. I think it's 
does it very well. It totally does. I'm getting a chill vibe right now. But we'll send you <laughs> Prime and Prime Pro because I think those will be the most valuable. And keep the intensity low in the classes. Bump your calories. I think you'll be totally fine. Good vibes. <laughs> Good vibes only. Sal is so not cool. <laughs> I know. We're sorry for that. Yeah. Okay. That's all I got to say. Listen, listen. I'm going to bet right now her favorite host on the show is me. Am I right, Carrie? <laughs> Am I right? The guy that gave you the free programs? Yes. Yeah. There it is. That's the earthy guy. I told you. And every I told time. you guys. Yeah. Every time. Also the guy that complimented on my, on my tapestry. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Thanks, Carrie. I appreciate you calling in. All right. <laughs> Apologize for my Neanderthal co-host. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> it's super windy in there, by the way. I yeah, know you know what? That, I think about. she might have had a fan on yeah. that might have been blowing air into the mic. Well, it's interesting because when she was talking, that was the only time there was a problem. So weird, mm, very, very weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, um, like superpower. I think she overcomplicated everything. You know, because like you know, I used to. You guys ever train Group X instructors? Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges was that the fact that they would do the class with the class, right? And I remember one of the easiest things I ever did with one of these instructors who was struggling. She's like, I'm losing muscle. What do I do? I said, stop taking the class with your class. Yeah. Just instruct them and then walk around and watch their form. And that alone made a huge difference. It was like she was working out three, four times a day on top of her workouts because she was doing the class. Well, which is another form of mm -hmm. just modifying intensity. Sometimes we think that like we have to like scaling back means we need to drop all these exercises or drop sets. Like sometimes it's okay to just go through the movements and just reduce the intensity, the weight you're moving. Just mm -hmm. go. I mean, because I think there's tre the tremendous benefit of still moving the body through these exercises and totally. doing the movements. Just, you know, like you said, practice them, practice them, go really lightweight and go through it. And I think that would, that would, uh, help out a ton and then also the bumping the calories with Agreed. all the you know, extra movement our next caller is carrie from china hey carrie how can we help you uh hey guys uh, this is so cool so um my my question is uh i've been lifting for many years um and recently bought a bunch of maps programs and um i'm finding that there are uh, quite a few shrugs and um bicep curls and calf raises in, in some of the programs. And I was wondering, what are the benefits to these uh, these movements beyond growing my, my traps and my biceps and my calves? Uh, because these aren't, these aren't target areas for me. So, um, yeah. So I'm just wondering, uh, should I skip them or should I uh, try to modify the, like, the volume in some way? Um, or would that mess with the programming somehow? Could I replace them with with other movements uh, for target areas that I, I am trying to grow. Because um, I know that all the, uh, the movements are kind of put together, you know, with a, with a, a long-term plan. So <laughs> I wasn't sure um, if changing them for completely different movements that target different body parts would, would impact the, the programming. Yeah, really good question. Okay, so I'll answer. I'll answer the the first part. Um, but I mean, the, the basic answer is to strengthen those areas, right? So shrugs mm -hmm. help strengthen the shoulder girdle, helps provide stability for the shoulders. Obviously, works those trap muscles uh, as well. Uh, okay. Biceps. I mean, you're strengthening the arms. Uh, the biceps mm -hmm. are an important muscle to have to be strong. Calf raises. Same okay. thing with the calf area. Now, can you, if you feel those areas are strong and stable? Can you cut the volume or even eliminate exercises, uh, or those exercises and replace them with others? Yeah, you totally can. Like your biceps are going to get stronger just from doing back exercises. Your traps will get more stable and strong from doing a lot of overhead presses and rows. And if your calves, you know, if you do a lot of walking and you're going to get some stabilization with your calves with, with other lower body exercises. So you can, you can take those exercises out or just reduce the volume and replace them with mm -hmm. target areas. But I would caution people listening, um, if you need strength in those areas, don't just think of it from an aesthetic standpoint. Because I've had women say, I don't want to work my biceps because I don't want big arms. But there are, they're, they're not in a place where they think they have big arms now. Say, so, well, strengthen those anyways. And when you get to the point where you're like, okay, I don't want this muscle to get any more developed, then it's okay to cut it out. So remember, the strength is the most important thing that we want. So, But you can definitely cut those out or reduce them and, and replace with other stuff. Well, especially these um, three, in my opinion, too. Yeah. I mean, you're talking. we're not talking about prime movers, right? She's not yeah. trying to drop the, the back. Like presses. Like, these and, are all the ones we're trying to sneak in at the end. Right? Yeah, so this is an example mm -hmm. of like where if you were a client of mine, um, we one, we would have gone through like MAPS Prime, so I could have assessed your movement and your posture. Mm -hmm. And this is a perfect example of where I would probably drop those exercises and then 
and put in something that I think would benefit your overall posture or something, right? So like, I don't know if you've mm. gone through um, the Maps Prime yet or not. Um, Justin? Uh, yeah, I okay. have. Okay, cool. So here's, so I, I don't know how well you did on zone one, zone two or zone three, but let's just say, for example, you, you know, you, you failed zone one pretty bad. So this is where I might put in a, a movement that's going to, you know, work on that to benefit that, which is in prime, like your fort, like a fortification exercise. I might slide that into the workout here. So there's an example, or if there was a specific body part that we're trying to work on that you feel is lagging, I might put that in there. Although I do know that in map, you have the RGB. So maps aesthetic is what mm -hmm. when we really get into focusing on body parts. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I would more more than likely either do a corrective exercise right here that I think will benefit your overall posture or potentially even a mobility movement uh, in this in this place mm -hmm. where let's say you you have a real hard time with getting deep squats uh, and it's mm -hmm. ankle mobility is the reason for it. And so if you were training with me for that hour and we come up on the bicep section, we wouldn't do that. We would get down and I do some combat stretching with you just to build that into a routine for you. So this is how I would modify mm -hmm. in a situation like that. If you were an actual client. Yeah. But to, to Sal's point in terms of strength and so the shoulder girdle, cause I've gotten that criticism a few times with women for the shrugs, uh, because it's just not like a typical, um, exercise women are pursuing for the most part, but uh, mm -hmm. in terms of like you know strengthening your upper back and also that feeding into the the stability and keeping your shoulders in track, um, you know there's a lot of functional benefit to it as well as as strengthening it. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Actually, I I seem to have um, maybe hurt my shoulder a little bit recently, and maybe it's because I've been skipping the shrugs. So okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and okay, should I? Right. Go. I was going to say, you do them light, do yeah. them real slow mm -hmm. and controlled, mm -hmm. uh, maintain good posture while you do them. Um, and then when you do your shoulder exercises, same thing, like maintain good mm -hmm. form, good technique, and try to find a way to move within the form where it feels good. And if that means you need to cut the weight way down, then so be it. Now, Carrie, I see that you bought all these programs. Have you actually gone all the way through a program yet from beginning to end yet? Or are you just getting started? Uh, I've done um, performance and anabolic, and I just started um, aesthetic. Um, but I'm then I went on holiday for a couple weeks, and I <laughs> I'm gonna have to start over again. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So there's the, yeah. there's some other things here because you did performance, so you 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 get the mobility thing that I was saying there. So if there was something in performance that you felt you got great benefits from, that was like maybe mm. part of a mobility session. Or say like a Z press exercise, like an exercise that you're like, oh, that really, like this is where I, I, this is where we try and teach people. Like we always tell people, like follow everything to a T at least once, so you get the gist of the programming and why we do everything. And then let's say when you're coming back around and now you're an anabolic and you're like, man, I don't want all this trap work here. But boy, when I was doing that Z press and performance, I, my shoulders felt good. I felt the core stability. Mm -hmm. I don't, and so then I take that and I'm going to put it in right there, right? So. You can use the other programs, or let's say I think you have strong. Also, we're bringing up traps. Uh, there's farmer walks mm. in in that program. Yeah. that's a great exercise. That's going to do what uh, Justin and Sal are talking about: the shoulder girdle and stability in the shoulder. Mm. And so you really liked that. And it's not like directly working on hypertrophy for the traps, but it is mm. giving you those benefits. Yeah, it's yeah. giving you the benefits that they're talking about. So this is how we start to kind of mold and play with some of the things in the other programs and then put them in and replace some yeah. some movements like that. Carrie, um, I, I want to ask you a question. How do you how do you how do you listen to us in China? Because I've had other people say that they can't <laughs> access our show because of the platforms being blocked and stuff. Are you is there a specific platform? Or if you don't want to answer, you don't have to, by the way, but just out of curiosity. Oh no, it's fine. Yeah, no, I it's 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 a bit iffy. Um, so sometimes it's easy to download, sometimes it's not. But I'm using the Apple um, the Apple platform, just okay. Apple uh, podcast. Yeah. All right, cool. Spotify just doesn't doesn't work at all. I can't listen to. I mean, I can listen to music, but I can't listen to podcasts. I don't know why. Okay. Oh, um, and sometimes I need a VPN. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But not but not always. So I don't really understand. All right, good yeah, deal. Well, weird. we're not fully banned yet, boys. We got to try harder. <laughs> no, you're not fully banned. But I do, I do sometimes sneak across the Great Wall to the Great Firewall to to catch up on your Instagram. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. well, thank you. Yeah, got my got my in my uh, illegal contraband mind pump over here. Oh God, I love you. <laughs> thank you so much. And I want to thank you guys. Yeah, yeah, you guys have brought me a lot of joy. I've been listening for four years. 
you're in my ear every day. So hell yeah, um, brought me a lot of joy. I've learned a lot from the show, not just about fitness, but just about life in general, uh, entrepreneurship especially. It's really, uh, it's really cool listening to you guys every day. Oh well, thank you so much, yeah. Carrie. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah, thank for you guys. Me. Very helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bro, how cool is that? That you gotta like. You got to get a VPN and you got to like sneak mind pump in yeah. so you can listen to us. Right. <laughs> Such a rebel. I love oh, it. that makes me so happy. It also highlights how hard it is to control, you know, that kind of stuff in the, in the age of, of technology. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. But you know, she has a very common question and, and I, you know, I've, I've worked with women who genuinely strong, genuinely said, Oh, you know, my traps are a little overdeveloped. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of cut those out, but it's usually not the case. Usually they're just afraid of the exercise, but you know, you're not going to work out a muscle and wake up the next day with it being overdeveloped. So yeah. my advice is always, you know, train every muscle. And then if you do, if you are lucky enough to get to the point where a muscle's like really developed, you're like, this is as far as I want to go, then you can back off. It's not that mm -hmm. big of a deal. Well, that was the reason why I asked if she had gone through any of our programs all the way through. Yeah, I think that I figured. that recommendation is is pretty consistent from us, right? Like you need a baseline. Of yeah. To follow it. Cause what, to your point again, uh, you're not going to wake up overnight and have massive traps or biceps. You're not even going to go through an entire MAPS anabolic program and wake up and have massive traps or biceps from that, especially as a female. So going through that, I would still recommend a client to do it so they can just feel it. Like, how did you feel at the end of it? And and maybe, right, maybe she's an anomaly and she already had big traps or biceps going in and, and, it, and it made it feel like it was more. Then I say, okay, next time when we go through, we put that Z press in there or we do that combat stretch yeah. or we, 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 we replace it with another Modify, movement yeah. or exercise that will benefit her overall goals. Our next caller is Nathan from Connecticut. Nathan, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you for all you guys do for everybody. I know you hear that all the time, but got to say it, you know. Yeah, thank you, man. Right thank on. you, bro. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Um, so I'll jump right into it. Got a little bit of stuff to get to before I get to my question. Uh, so background on me, um, 37. I'm 5'11", 180 pounds, uh, tri-sport athlete in high school, uh, do pretty much every kind of sport that I can do right now, baseball, softball, basketball, that kind of stuff, um, workout wise. So over the years, I've just kind of developed my own program. Um, just basically, you know, being in the military, as you can see, uh, it's, it's kind of hard keeping a schedule with a trainer. So I've worked on my own stuff. Uh, it's 10 week program, three phases last week of the 10 weeks is an off week. So first phase is more the five by five strength. And then the following two phases are, you know, bringing reps up, weight down, just to kind of get a full thing going. Uh, and that's three days a week, full body. Um, so the nutrition side, keep religiously in check. I uh, do intermittent fasting daily, six hour eating window. I had to get about 3000 calories a day. And then usually it's summertime. So a cheat day a week. Um, and then, you know, I follow... Dr. Axe, I follow you guys, Dave Asprey, Ben Greenfield. Uh, I know y'all had Max Lugavir on a little while ago. I love that guy. Um, but I'm always trying to do cutting edge for anything that I can get. Um, and then since, since uh, this incident happened, I've maintained body weight, uh, just keeping that schedule. Um, so just looking to kick back into the workout side. So on May 27th, I broke my right arm. Uh, and that was a right arm radial head fracture. So right at the spot at the elbow, it split down the center. Um, it was clean break. Didn't have surgery. I just had a sling for a little week for about a week until I got some, some range of motion back. Um, and that obviously stopped my workouts. Uh, and then I was just doing lower body weight, body weight squats and stuff like that, doing ab routines. And then, um, I've been going to physical therapy for about three weeks now. So this is week, this will be week nine of the break. Uh, I did get a x-ray last week so that the bone is actually healed. And so I've started actually trying to ramp up my workouts again. Um, but the therapy has been good for getting, I almost have full hundred percent range of motion back. And so I haven't broken anything since second grade. Um, so in, in that regard and my workout routines, I've kept things pretty symmetrical, which is kind of the basis for my question. So I'll go in and ask that and then kind of pose it in two different ways just to make sure I'm getting the, the question across. So since my long-term plan was to do my program until about the winter time, um, 
being up here in the cold. And then I was going to work through the aesthetic program was going to be the next one I was going to do. Do you think it would be worth it to work through the new symmetry program now before I do that to try and realign left and right arms? Or do you think muscle memory would be enough to bring the arm back up to par where it was? And then the other way of asking would be, would doing the symmetry program accelerate me back to where I was before the break? Do yeah, symmetry. Yes. Symmetry. Yes. Massively beneficial for yeah. what you're going through right now. By the way, if you didn't break your arm with your experience and training and your fitness level, I would still sell, tell you to do symmetry. But considering the fact that you okay. broke your arm and uh, it's there's a no brainer, th th that's, yeah. it's even more of a case. Yeah, 100%. You're going to get great. Uh, you know what's funny? We wrote the program. We knew it would be valuable. We put it out there, and the the now we're getting reviews, and people are are messaging us, and the response is even more than we could have anticipated. Like people who had no symmetrical issues, who just were competitive powerlifters or strength athletes or you know, whatever, and they're like, "Man, I had no idea mm -hmm. how much of an impact." And we know this because all of us have experimented and trained with um, unilateral training, and there's no programming that does it properly. There's really most people treat it as an afterthought. So. Yeah, even regardless, if you like I said, if you didn't break your arm, I would yeah. still tell you, go through symmetry. Watch what happens at the end. You'll be blown away. It's just interesting because there's all this like underlying issues or there's ways that we do things and, and it, it's just hardwired in us. And I think that, you know, this is yeah. just one of those programs that helps to kind of highlight and bring to the surface a lot of those things. So you'll probably find other benefits of it besides just rehabilitating, you know, and getting your other arm back up to speed. So I'm, I'm excited for you. Nathan, do you own yeah. uh, do you own Prime Pro yet? I don't. Okay, I'm gonna have Doug send Prime Pro to you. The one thing I'll add to what the guys already said, because I 100 percent agree, uh, is to keep up the shoulder and wrist mobility stuff. So pull specifically <laughs> from uh from Prime Pro, the wrist cars and shoulder shoulder mobility drills that we have in there, and incorporate that okay. into your we weekly routine. So even though you're getting full range of motion back in the elbow, one of the things that tends to freeze up a little bit is the range of motion that you had in that shoulder or that wrist. Yeah, they compensate without you even knowing. That's right. And you may mm -hmm. not even realize it yet until you get back to like really pushing the weight, which symmetry of, is absolutely the way to go uh, for programming for that reason. And then in addition to that, I would make sure I'd incorporate some of those wrist and shoulder mobility. Yeah. Do you uh, have also. symmetry uh, as well? I didn't yet. And I, the funny thing was, is I was thinking about getting it and then the break happened. I was like, well, mm -hmm. That would be the perfect thing to ask about. So well, we'll send you both. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll send, send you out. both. So okay, I, I really appreciate that, guys. Yeah, no problem, man. And thanks for what you do. Yeah, I thanks see for your, your service. Yeah, man. I see your uniform there. I see you're in the Navy. So yeah. thanks for what you do, man. You're welcome. Um, and and one last thing, uh, I have to give a shout out to Ben Patrick, who's the knees over toes guy. Who yeah. I you guys Great. turned me on to him with this with talking about sled work. Um. And I think it would be awesome if you guys could have him on to talk like you do some other people, because I think he'd be really great for the community. Yeah, yep. agree. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Working he's, on he's it. Great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Thank you. You got it. All right. Yeah, it was a pretty obvious answer. I know. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't really a. It wasn't. It was a layup. Right? Yeah, well, I, when I was reading it, I could tell. Like, I think he kind of knew too. I mean, he. He, I think he just wanted you know, to hear. You know why he asked that question? I think a lot of people have this misunderstanding that if they go through a unilateral program, that they're somehow going to slow down their bilateral progress. Yeah. Right. You know, like, oh, I'm going to do this unilateral stuff, but oh, my, you know, I want to get my bench up. I wanna... What you'll find at the end of training through a cycle of unilateral training like symmetry is your bilateral strengths can go through the roof. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest review that I'm getting yeah. from people. They didn't anticipate to break through um, their PRs by training unilateral, but that's exactly what's happening. So you're, you're not taking a step back. You're, you're moving forward. You're just doing the yeah, right you're way. You're strengthening and reinforcing things. You didn't even really like anticipate you needed to address. So I think it's, it's one of those things, the unintended consequences, you get stronger uh, at your other pursuits. Our next caller is Kara from British Columbia, Canada. Hey Kara, how can we help you? Hey guys, I just wanted to say thanks so much for having me as everybody does. Um, I've just got a couple of notes here. Um, I've been listening to you guys for about uh, three years now. Um, I have had a lot of success um, running MAPS programs and listening to your guys' advice. So I just can't say how much I appreciate um, all of the work that you do. Thank you. Brad. So a little bit of background about me. Um, I'm 32 years old, mom to two girls aged uh, two and four. Um, 
I'm a wife and I'm currently working at least full time, sometimes more than that in a week. Um, for reference, I'm five foot three and currently weigh about 124 pounds. Um, I've been working out off and on since I was a teenager, but got pretty serious about health and fitness um, six or seven years ago and have been pretty consistent with training ever since. Um, after having kids, I dieted, quote unquote, pretty um, intensely for a while, cutting my calories and doing um, HIIT training five days a week at one point during the pandemic. Um, and about May of 2021, after listening to you guys talk a lot about reverse dieting and why women should bulk, um, I finally decided to go ahead and go for it. Um, I reversed my uh, calories in a year from about 1,200 to about 2,400 wow. um, right. calories. Awesome. Thanks. It was awesome. <laughs> um, so that took me about a year. I, uh, I felt like I put on some pretty good muscle um, running Matt's programs. And, um, and in May of this year, I decided to do a little bit of a cut um, before summer. I um, had decreased my calories originally from 2,400 to 1,700 a day. I was losing a bit too much. Um, I felt like and didn't want to lose too much muscle with that. So I bumped them up to 1,900 um, at the same time as I started map symmetry. And I thought that that might work out well. Um, about a week into map symmetry, though, um, my 1,900 calories was not enough. <laughs> um, I was hungry all of the time. Couldn't, um, couldn't seem to stay full. Um, and that's where I've been at. Uh, the last few weeks with summer and vacations, I haven't been as consistent running symmetry, um, but I've still been doing what I can. So phase two has taken me a little bit longer um, to get through, um, but I'm still struggling with my 1900 calorie a day goal. Um, and I'm not really sure what my calorie goal should be. So the question was, um, could my hunger be a sign of building muscle? And if this is the case, where should I go from here? Yeah. Um, can I keep up with symmetry and increase the calories or try something new to keep calories low? What, uh, any advice you have for me, I'd appreciate. Yeah, no, that's the, yes, I, it definitely is a sign of building muscle. So what you did was, is you switched to a new program and it's novel. Symmetry is very different from any other program. And so it's very likely that you are stimulating some muscle growth and some strength, definitely strength, right? Cause you're probably building stability and balance and balancing the body out. So what you're experiencing is actually a good sign. I would bump your calories up a little bit again. I'd go up to maybe 2,100 calories and see how you feel. Because anytime you change a program, especially if it's a program that's working well for your body, you're, one of the signs you'll see along with strength gains is an increase in appetite. It's, it's a really, really good sign. And because you're lean and fit and because you've done it right in the past, um, I think that's what's happening. Now, if, if, if this were like a beginner just getting started, I'd say, okay, well, you might not know your body so well. Maybe you're just getting used to what it feels like to be in a deficit. But I think based off of what you said and your experience, that's probably what you're feeling. What you're probably experiencing is symmetry was a new novel program. It's probably what you needed. You're building some muscle. So that became a larger deficit than you had anticipated. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I do want to comment on something that Sal said and you said that he's any he referenced if you were like a new a new client or a new person getting into working out and I think it's important that people understand this because it is normal though to be hungry when you're in a cut totally uh, and 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 part of being consistent with that is getting to a place of just being comfortable with that feeling uh, you're not starving your body your body is fed. Um, you'll, you'll, you would know if you were in any state of where you're starving and that's not the case. So it is very normal to feel that I do though, agree that 1900 is a lot lower than where you were just currently at. You have a new stimulus. You probably could easily bump your calories up and still lean out like you want, but just, just so the audience knows that, cause sometimes there's this, like, like, Oh, I feel hungry. That means, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the, so then I, I've had clients before that use that, Oh, I'm hungry. I must be losing muscle or this can't be good. And so then they are always feeding. Then they're like, I don't know why I can't lose the body fat. It's like, well, we have to learn to be comfortable with that feeling too. So there is a little bit of normalcy there, but I think you're in a place where you worked your, you reverse dieted, you worked your calories up high enough that you probably just cut too much back with adding in the new stimulus. So yeah, bump the, the bump the calories up a couple hundred and then, and then base that off of what you see. So hopefully we can add another 200 or 300 calories to your diet a day 
and you still feel like you're leaning out. Now, if you don't lean out and you've added those calories, then maybe it's just you getting comfortable with that lower calorie intake. Yeah, so. maybe, maybe you just go up to 2,000 2, calories instead of 2,100 or 2,200. Yeah. But, I mean, just to give you, like, another example, like, if somebody's training right and doing everything right and they've got a good, healthy metabolism and everything's great, and then they change you to a new program that's their, that their body was thirsting for, like it was appropriate for their body, sometimes, often, they don't even have to change their calories. They'll just start to get leaner because – the new stimulus is building muscle. So it, it automatically becomes a cut. So consider this, your metabolism is changing all the time. It's not stagnant, right? It's not stationary. So what might have been a deficit before or what might have been, you know, might have been maintenance before might be might be a deficit now because the new program is moving things in the right direction. That's a very, very good thing. So I would say, like I so I stick to what I said before. I bump it a little bit. And see how you feel. Um, and, and my guess is you'll still get leaner with a little bit higher calories. Okay. Well, that sounds fantastic. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, I did just want to point out that, yeah, when I was at the 1700, which was pretty significant deficit, um, I actually wasn't struggling with hunger. It wasn't until I got up to 1900 the same day that I started symmetry. Yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yep. I think, uh, I think you guys are absolutely right, but thank you for um, confirming. It's hard just you know, you don't want to bump your calories up too much and then have an adverse effect, but I'll definitely take your guys' advice. You've never steered me wrong in the past and really appreciate it. Yes. We earned awesome, your trust. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. <laughs> Thank you. You take care. You got it. Yeah. That, that was a sign that I would love hearing from clients, Yeah, you know, and you, you can hear it. I mean, we've mm -hmm. been doing this long enough to where we deciphered it just by, based off what she said, but you get that every once in a while. I was like, well, why is my appetite going up? And I'm like, well, you just you added 10 pounds to this. You added five pounds of that. You had 15 pounds of this. You're stronger. You're, you're, I can tell you're building muscle. Mm -hmm. Like your metabolism has changed. That deficit now is too much of a deficit. Yeah. And that's why you're feeling. What did she say? Up. She worked herself 27 or 2900. I can't remember. No, what no, she no. She went from 1200 calories to 22 or 2300 calories. No, then she said she worked up even higher. I yeah. thought. Yeah. I'm did pretty she? sure it was like 27 or 20. Yeah. I, I heard 2700 or 29. I'm reading off her, yeah. off her question. But then, so. Yeah. Yeah. And so for her to go down, uh, it was what, 1900? Yeah. Yeah. And then she. Yeah. 17. 17 and, and then, yeah, yeah. I had, to, had to bump it up. But what she said at the end was like, that was telling, right? Like 1700, I felt fine. Then right. I switched to symmetry. Now I'm hungry. Like yeah. immediate, right? Yeah. It, which is rad. Like that's that's one of those things we, we try to kind of convey that to people. If, mm -hmm. you, if you just change the stimulus, you can have great response like that. Totally. Right away. 100%. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. Again, they're all free. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injuries.